Down in the house basement, Lisa gazed at the CNI unit blueprints carefully as he began fastening the side panels of the dragster safe body onto the machine. It had been exactly an hour since Lisa had revealed everything about Lincoln's brain hemorrhage to her parents, and she had already constructed the flat bottom part of the CNI unit and was in the process of wielding and screwing the side panels onto it with the small tire wheels on the sides. Once the whole button was fully assembled, Lisa planned to install the large lithium battery into the unit and construct the power conduit, which would allow the battery to power the machine once it was fully complete. As Lisa worked carefully with the machine, she heard someone approaching her from behind her, catching her almost off guard. Lisa spun around and saw that it was Lucy. Oh, Lucy, what brings you here? Lisa asked, curiously, not expecting to see Lucy down in the basement. Lucy didn't answer. When Lisa noticed the perturbed expression on Lucy's face, she knew something wasn't right. While Lisa couldn't see Lucy's eyes because of her black hair covering them, she could see Lucy frowning in a way that told her that something was clearly bothering her. You seem troubled. Is something bothering you? Lisa asked. Very much so, Lucy asked in a rather cold manner. I see, Lisa replied concerned. Care to elaborate the problem? Lucy clenched her fists and said in a soft yet cold tone of voice, Why didn't you tell us, Lisa? Why didn't you tell us about Lincoln? Lisa felt her heart skip a beat when she heard Lucy ask that question. She realized at that moment that Lucy must have been eavesdropping on the, the entire conversation Lisa had with her parents about the hemorrhage in Lincoln's brain, and this made Lisa slightly panic. Had Lucy already told the rest of her sisters and Luann about it as well? I fail to understand what you're asking, Lisa asked. Don't play that game with me, Lucy snapped. I was in the vents writing my poems when I heard you speaking to our parents about something serious, so I crawled over to the vent leading into their room and heard everything. I'm not stupid. Seeing as how Lisa was obviously cornered, she replied with, So, you know about Lincoln's condition, I presume? Yes, and what I want to know is why you didn't tell the rest of us about it, Lucy replied coldly. It's because I don't want to cause any more tension than there already is, Lisa answered. If everyone else were to find out what I revealed to our parents, it would cause a great deal of unrest, stress, and depression amongst the rest of our siblings. And as for Luann, she'll most likely end up on suicide watch if she learns that Lincoln is going to die at the end of the month. You don't know that for sure, Lisa, Lucy argued. I think it's only fair that we let everyone else know about this. Not until my invention is complete, Lisa stated firmly. Lucy looked over at the machine Lisa was constructing and wondered what the so-called invention was. Since he hadn't stuck around long enough in the vents to hear Lisa's explanation of the CNI unit to her parents, Lucy didn't know about it yet. And just what is this? Lucy asked, pointing at the bottom part of the half-constructed machine. Don't you know? You said you listened to everything in the vents, so aren't you aware of my plan to save our brother? Lisa asked, confused. Not everything, Lisa confessed. I, I love events after hearing you... You mentioned the part about Lincoln's brain problem, so I don't know what else you said to Mom and Dad. I see, Lisa replied. Well, to put it simply, this is a machine capable of injecting millions of microscopic-sized nanites into a person's brain, which are designed to repair damaged brain tissue and remove brain tumors and hemorrhages that can't be removed through normal surgical means. It'll take almost the rest of a month to complete, but once it's done, I'll be able to save our brother's life. Seriously? That sounds like something out of some dark sci-fi story, Lucy, Lucy said in disbelief. I can assure you that this isn't a joke, Lisa retorted in a serious tone. I wouldn't lie about something like this. Technology like this definitely seems like something at least a century away from now. But with the right scientific mind, anything is possible. How long will it take to complete this machine of yours? Lincoln doesn't have more than a month to live, Lucy wondered. Hopefully, if all goes according to plan, I should have it completed before the end of the month. Once the machine is fully constructed, I'll be able to successfully save our brother from death, Lisa answered. All I ask is that you keep absolutely quiet about Lincoln's condition while in the presence of our other siblings in order to prevent certain unrest and panic from occurring. And I don't even need to tell you how serious it is that you don't let Luann know about it, either. Don't you think they have the right to know? And besides, even if I stay quiet, eventually our sisters are going to become suspicious when they see you working on this machine down here, Lucy pointed out. I'll simply tell them that it's part of a science experiment that I'm conducting, Lisa replied. I highly doubt they'll fall for that, given the fact that it, this looks nothing like a science experiment. The bottom part of this machine barely looks complete, Lucy replied doubtfully. 
I'm aware of that, Lisa said sarcastically. I'm also aware that our siblings will eventually grow suspicious of what I'm doing down here, and when the time comes, I'll let them know about Lincoln's condition. Mom and Dad have also agreed to insert our sisters that I'm simply working on a special science project down here. For now, though, we need to keep them in the dark about this to ensure that the tension in this house doesn't get any worse than it already has. Mom and Dad are already freaking out about the hammers, and it'll only get worse if everyone else finds out about it, so please don't say a word about any of this. Lucy was silent for over a minute as he pondered on what to do. See, I'm concerned with the facts that Lisa had just mentioned due to the overbearing shock of learning that Lincoln's life was on the line because of a growing brain hemorrhage. Yet, C knew that Lisa was right about one thing. If Lan learned of this, C would end up having a mental breakdown over it, and her other siblings would definitely not take the bad news well at all. Either. Lucy doubted that any of them would attempt suicide like Gulan presumably would, but she knew that they'd all be emotionally and mentally scarred for her life over learning that their only brother would die from a forming brain hemorrhage. Lucy had known Lisa since the days she had shown her talents as a prodigy, and knowing how intelligent she was, Lucy knew she wasn't prone to make mistakes when times were deadly serious like this. Lisa, you, you sure that you know what you're doing? I mean, I'm no science buff, but what if something bad happens to Lincoln when you use this machine on him? You used, you've you used us as test subjects of the past for many of your other experiments, and some of them didn't go very well. What if this thing fries Lincoln's brain? Lucy asked wordly. Mom and Dad asked that same question, and I can assure you that no harm will come to him, Lisa answered. I ran several test simulations on my laptop to ensure that the machine won't cause any fatal damage to the patient's brain when used, and all of the tests came out positive. I'm fully certain that this machine is safe. I see, Lucy replied simply, but it won't, would seem that our brother's life is in your hands. Yes, it is, Lisa nodded. And if this machine is successful, it can be mass-produced and shipped to billions of other hospitals across the globe to be used on other patients in need of brain surgery. This event will not only save our brother's life, but possibly billions of other lives out there in the world, and it will give humanity a huge leap in medical technology advancement. Then I pray for your success, Lisa replied. I take it that you'll stay silent about Lincoln's condition for now, Lisa asked. It will be as you wish, Lucy replied with a nod. Glad to see we have an understanding, Lisa said, turning back to the machine. I'd best get to constructing this device. There's no time to lose. Lucy nodded, then rushed back upstairs and climbed back into the air vents while putting all her faith in Lisa to save Le Lincoln's life. Several hours later, around 9 p.m., everyone was headed off to bed, including Luann. She had been sitting in a room all day, mumbling to her dummy, Mr. Coconuts, about how much she feared for her brother's life and various other things regarding the whole situation, and she was now exhausted. Luna hasn't said, hadn't said much to Luann the whole day, since he still detested her for being the cause of Lincoln's accident, and even now, as he and Luann got into bed, she still didn't say much to Luann. Meanwhile, in Lily's room, Lisa had made a few last finishing touches to the Dream Simulator band before exiting the room, quietly, as to not wake up Lily. Once she was out in the hall, she carefully and quietly walked down the hall towards Luna and Luann's room. The hallway was dimly lit by a nightlight plugged into the wall, allowing Lisa to navigate down the hall without bumping into anything. Once Lisa reached Luann and Luna's room, she saw her two sisters snoozing in her beds. Lisa slowly approached Luann's bed with the Dream Simulator headband in her hands. Being careful as to not wake up Lan or Luna, she had programmed the device with a special dream simulation that she felt certain would ease Luann's stress and guilt over Lincoln's accent. A dream that was more beautiful than some of the horrid nightmares that Lisa was sure Luann might have been having. Lisa could tell that Luann was probably having a nightmare at that very moment since she could be seen with a saddened expression on her sleeping face, and Luann was moaning softly in both sorrow and dismay. Don't worry, sister, Lisa whispered as she gently slid the metal band around Luann's head and tapped a few buttons on it. You'll feel better soon. A set of lights came on both sides of the headband, flashing red. After a few seconds of flashing red, the lights turned green, letting Lisa know that it was functioning correctly. Luann opened her eyes as she felt a gentle breeze blowing through the air, then sat up to find herself in the middle of an enormous field of grass and various colors, colored trees. A long lake of sparkling water ran through the field of grass, leading into a large clearing about 50 feet ahead of Lu Luann when she saw something growing brightly. Up above, above in the sky, Luann saw a beautiful aurora borealis shining brightly among the starry night sky. Luann felt both awed and intrigued by this beautiful place and surprisingly calm. What is this place? Luann wondered as he walked towards the source of the bright light 
light in the clearing up ahead. As Lauren got closer, she felt as if she weren't alone in the strange yet beautiful forest of trees. Normally, any person might have panicked after waking up in the middle of a strange forest with no knowledge on how they got here. Yet Lauren didn't feel any sort of fear, nor did she panic. Instead, she felt warm and happy, which was something Lauren hadn't felt since Lincoln's accident. Before the incident on April Fool's Day, that left Lincoln a cell of his former self. Lauren had always been full of laughter, joy, and happiness. However, after Lincoln was severely injured by one of her bot's prank traps, any happiness or positive emotion that Lauren once had was gone and replaced by sorrow, regret, and fear. Each new day was the day that Lauren was constantly feared for Lincoln's life, wondering if that day would be his last, wondering if that day would be the day that Lincoln ended up succumbing to his injuries and ended up dying in the hospital. Lauren honestly couldn't understand why she was feeling any sort of joy or happiness right now after everything that had happened, yet she soon find the answer to this mystery. Once Lauren finally made it into the clearing, she was greeted to one of the most beautiful sights she had ever seen this far. In front of Lauren was an enormous sour lake with a beautiful fountain in the center, which had a glowing star-shaped wand sitting on the very top. This fountain closely resembled the Fountain of Dreams from the Kirby game series that our friends had frequently played in the past during sleepovers. However, the fountain wasn't all that Luan saw. There, standing next to the beautiful fountain, was none other than Lincoln, and he was standing near the fountain with his back turned to Luan. Lincoln looked just like as he did before his accident on April Fool's Day, completely unharmed and fully healthy. No signs of brain damage or any other impairments. Luann felt tears of both happiness and remorse well up on her eyes as she slowly approached Lincoln, her footsteps making sm soft splashing sounds. Lincoln then turned to face Luann with a smile, looking better than ever before. Lincoln had no I Luann had no idea whether this was a dream or some vision from above, but right now, none of it mattered. Just being able to see her brother completely unharmed, unscathed, and standing again filled Luann with pure joy and happiness. Hey, Luann, Lincoln greeted. This place is beautiful, isn't it? Luann was responded by rushing up and tightly embracing Lincoln, letting her tears flow. Nothing's more beautiful than seeing you unharmed, Luann sniffed. I'm I'm so sorry for what I did, Lincoln. I Luann, Lincoln began embracing Luann. Lincoln began embracing Luann. There's no need to apologize. I know that you didn't mean to hurt me. And as for Bun Bun, I'm glad you fixed him up. That really means a lot to me, Luann. Luann felt so much relief knowing that her brother forgave her for harming him with her pranks. Yet she still felt horrible that Lincoln would be, still be crippled for the rest of his life. But you'll never be the same again. You'll be brain damaged and paralyzed from the waist down forever, Luann protested. True, but in this place, I don't have to worry about any of that, Lincoln replied. Luann gl glanced all around the area and wondered just what exactly this place was. Was this some alternate dimension? A dream, or maybe limbo. She had been trying to figure out what this place was, yet Luann couldn't, no matter how hard she tried. What is this place, exactly? Is this the afterlife? Is it a dream? Luann asked. Afterlife? Oh, heavens no! Lincoln laughed. I'm still alive, and so are you. So this is no afterlife. Then, what is this? I've never seen a place so beautiful like this before. I can only assume this is a dream, since the fountain looks like the fountain of dreams from those Kirby games. Luann wondered, glancing at the beautiful fountain next to her in Lincoln. This place is what you'd call the dream realm. It's a place where troubled people can find relief and comfort in, in their dreams. It doesn't matter what injuries they may have received out in the real world. In this place, you're as free and healthy as any normal person, Lincoln explained. The dream realm, realm. Is that where we go in our dreams? Luann asked curiously. In a manner of speaking, yes, Lincoln nodded. The dream realm is whatever you desire it to look like. If this is a dream, whose dream is this? Luann asked. I believe it's your dream, Lincoln replied, and I'm a part of it. This place is beautiful, Luann said in awe, glancing at the fountain and the entire shiny lake around them. I wonder why the dream realm took this form. The dream realm usually takes the form of places that people are familiar with in real life, and I believe that because this place is a landscape that you've seen before whenever you played the Kirby games in the past... There's many things about the dream realm I don't understand yet either, but I believe it will change into whatever form you desire if you focus on the landscape hard enough in your mind, Lincoln explained. There's no need for that, Lincoln said, embracing Lincoln again. I'm happy right where we are, right here with you. I just wish that this dream would never end. Once it does, you'll be disabled again out there in the real world. And it's all my fault. 
Luan. Lincoln said, embracing Lu Lincoln said, embracing Luan. I know you didn't mean to do what you did. And as for Bun Bun, I did get very upset when that party ball exploded and damaged him. But when I saw that you repaired him, it really warmed my heart, knowing that you atoned for what you did, and I can't thank you enough. I, I know, Luan said softly, feeling tears run down her face again. I just wish I could have you back the way you always were, back in the real world. Don't despair, Luan, Lincoln asserted her. Lisa will find a way to save me, so have faith in her. I may not be entirely the same as I used to be back in the real world, but with Lisa's help, parts of me may be healed enough to speak again. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to recover more of my memories. Yeah, you weren't able to recognize all of us in the hospital, like Bobby and Mikasa Grands. As for Ronnie Ann, you acted terrified when she got close to you, Gwen recalled. I did? Ronnie Ann is my friend. I mean, yes, he was a bit tough and often pestered the living daylight down me many times before, but we eventually got along rather well, Lincoln said, surprised. You don't remember anything from the hospital? Luan asked, frowning. Not much, Lincoln replied. Back in the real world, my physical body sustained a lot of damage and my brain got hurt the most. Because of that, remember things is very, very hard to do back in the real world. What can you remember since you ac your accident? Luan asked. Hmm, well, I do remember fragments of you and the others in the recovering room with me after I awoke from surgery. Then there's the time from yesterday when I was being cleaned in the hospital sour room by Mom and some doctor. I can't remember who he is, Lincoln replied. Then I remember Mom having an emotional breakdown over my injuries, and then of Cassegrants coming to see me, but nothing else after that. I can remember every memory since I was young from here in the dream world, but even here I can't remember every event that took place after my accident with the fridge. As I mentioned, most of those events are foggy and hard to remember because of the brain damage I received. I see, Luan said sadly. I don't know how Lisa could possibly help you. I mean, she's a real genius and all, but even Lisa has her limits. Don't be so sure, Luan, Lincoln said with a smile. I'm sure Lisa will figure out how to heal some of my injuries, and I think you might be a bit surprised on what she has in store. Luan was a bit confused by this. What did Lincoln mean by what she has in store? Luan was about to ask Lincoln when the dream world began simmering, but, hmm, Lincoln said, glancing around, it seems as though you're starting to wake up back in the real world. I'm glad I was able to see you again, Luan. I hope we can meet again in our dreams like this. As Lincoln suddenly started to simmer and become transparent, Luan quickly embraced him. Please don't leave me, Lincoln. I can't bear to see you back in your crippled state. I don't want to leave this place. Not ever, Luan pleaded. Oh, and Lincoln comforted, embracing her. You know how the old saying goes. All good things have to end at some point. Just remember, I'll always be with you, no matter what state I'm in. It may not be the same out there in the real world, but I'll still be there to see you, even if my mind isn't as it was before. No, Lincoln, Luan said, almost sobbing at this point. You have no idea what it's like for me out there in the real world. Every day I worry about your health as you lay there in that hospital, wondering about whether or not you'll make through your recovery or end up even worse. It's tearing me apart, Lincoln. I, I don't know how much more of it I can take back out there. I know how hard it must be for you, but you can't stay here forever. You, you have to face reality and learn to overcome whatever difficult paths, paths that lay ahead. And that includes my well-being. Lincoln replied, hugging Luan. If you don't learn how to overcome those paths and just shut yourself out from the world because of a mistake you made, it'll haunt you for the rest of your life. Don't shut the world out because of me, Luan. Learn to overcome this event and never give up. Hearing Lincoln say such powerful words lifted a lot of pressure off of Luan's shoulders. Ever since Lincoln's horrible accident at her hands, Luan had become a completely different person. Before, she had been a happy, rambunctious teen who was often trying to make other people laugh with her jokes, pranks, and puns, despite, despite some of them being not not being very good, and some of them being annoying. However, after Lincoln suffered his life-changing accident because of a prank trap gone horribly wrong, Lan's personality had changed completely. After the events of April Fool's Day, Lan was now a sad, depressed, and anxious person who didn't know what to do with her life at this point. Comedy had always been Lance town, but after what had happened to Lincoln, she never wanted to have anything to do with comedy ever again. Even if her parents didn't ban Lance from pulling pranks, cracking jokes, or telling puns of a house, Lance would still never want to have anything to do with those things ever again. Comedy was what got Lincoln into this horrible mess. 
and it would always serve as a tragic reminder to Lynn that her brother would never be the same again because of how out of control she had been with her pranks. However, Lynn knew that Lincoln was right about one thing, and that was the fact that she couldn't let this horrible event control her life anymore. Lynn would have to move on at some point, no matter how hard it would be. I'll try, Lincoln, Lynn finally said, but I don't know how. You will, Lynn, Lincoln responded. In time, you will. I believe in you, Lynn. Lincoln now began to fade away slowly, causing Lynn to grow distressed. Please don't go, she pleaded. I believe in you, sis. I believe in you, Lincoln repeated until he faded away with the rest of the dream world. Lisa noticed Lynn beginning to rapidly stir in her sleep, making her realize that Lynn was slowly waking up. Lisa quickly pulled the dream simulator headband off Lance head and rushed out of her room just before she woke up completely. Once Lisa was back in her own room, she glanced down at the band and saw the green flashing light rapidly on the left side, letting her know that her, the dream simulation she programmed into it worked successfully. Smiling with satisfaction, Lisa said, the band on her bedside as she climbed into bed, exhausted from staying awake in Lan and Luna's room for over an hour. Don't you worry, Lan. I'll save our brother's life. I promise, Lisa whispered to herself and fell asleep, dreaming of Lincoln.